Welcome to r slash murdered by words, where some loser tries to teach an actual gold medalist how to play at their own sport. Posted to Facebook. Cancer and heart disease each killed more people in the US last year than COVID. Heart disease is a blanket term for a cluster of approximately 30 different deadly illnesses. Cancer is a blanket term for a cluster of over 100 separate diseases. Another common comparison is flu, which is a blanket term for about 60 different illnesses. COVID-19 is one disease. No single strain of flu, no single type of heart disease, and no individual cancer has come close to the casualty rate of COVID. The sort of comparison you're making is called an ecological fallacy. That means you're comparing statistics across two very different and incompatible levels of analysis. A comparable situation would be if I said, wow, New York has a lot of people. And you replied, actually, Asia has more people than New York. Technically true, but you're comparing a city to a continent, which is just stupid. It's the same thing if you compare one disease to a group of 100 diseases. But that's the thing. COVID is so effing bad that people who don't realize this feel a natural compulsion to compare it to something like cancer. That's how many people it's killing, that it's in the same ballpark as 100 cancers or 300 heart diseases combined. This next post comes from Tinder. You match with Brittany on January 4th. Hey. Knock knock. Who's there? Baby Yoda. Give me money. No, you're supposed to say Baby Yoda who. Finish the joke and I'll Venmo you. Baby Yoda who? Baby Yoda biggest gold digging whore I've ever seen in my life. Okay, so I've been happily married to my wife for like eight years. We've been together for a long time. And so I completely missed out on most of the social media dating. And I see posts like this where people match with someone and she's like, hi, give me money, please. And this is just completely alien to me because I've never personally experienced it. Is this like a thing that, that often happens? Guys, do you like go to dating apps and you'll match with people and just it's all spam? It's all women trying to get paid? Is it bots? Is it just scammers or is it just pretty girls who think, oh, well, this is just like OnlyFans except without the OnlyFans. Like, I, I don't know. This is really weird to me. This is going to sound, <laughs> this is going to sound really lame. I'm going to share something with you at my own expense to show you how lame and pathetic I am. So like, there's this, there's a joke of like, oh, swipe left on her. I actually don't, don't know what that means. <laughs> I know that swiping one way is good and swiping one way is bad, but I've never downloaded Tinder because I'm married. So when people say that, I never remember which one is which, so I never get the joke. I kind of have to just guess based on context if it's supposed to be, oh, she's really hot or oh, she's really ugly. And I've wanted to download the app just so I could like experience it because Tinder is so popular that it makes a lot of references in pop culture and like with that joke, for example. And so I want to know what it's like just so I can get the jokes. But I'm <laughs> I don't want to download Tinder on my phone because it's disrespectful to my wife. And I'm afraid that if she found out that I did it, even for completely innocent, not cheating reasons, she would be really hurt by it because why wouldn't she be hurt by it? So I just feel left out because I don't get I don't get any of the jokes. It's, 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 it's really lame. This is a really lame problem that I have, but this is just hashtag married person things, I guess. I don't know. I am obsessed with the stance on this sharpshooter. Then OP posts a picture of the Olympic athlete Vitalina Batsarashkina. Someone replies, that will have a huge recoil. There's a reason why people tell you to hold the gun with both hands. <laughs> you know she won gold, right? Imagine, number one, being so entitled that you're thinking about giving advice to the number one best athlete in the world at a sport. And two, being so completely clueless in the sport that you're commenting on that you don't actually realize that they shoot with airsoft guns, not real guns. Airsoft guns, for those of you who don't know, have very little recoil. So what this guy's suggesting is just plain stupid. This next post is from Malala. <laughs> yeah, that Malala. We watch in complete shock as Taliban takes control of Afghanistan. I am deeply worried about women, minorities, and human rights advocates. Global, regional, and local powers must call for an immediate ceasefire, provide urgent humanitarian aid, and protect refugees and civilians. Then beneath that, this guy named Gorav Gol replies, Madam, you only worry, but do nothing? Uh, she was willing to get killed as a child to stand up for her right to read. She got shot in the face. What did you ever do, Gorov? Of, 
Of all the people on Twitter this guy tries to gotcha, he chooses Malala. F the vaccine. But also, you should get vaccinated, or else a vaccinated person might get sick from a virus they got vaccinated against because you're not vaccinated. I found the moron who doesn't understand herd immunity. We worry about people who can legitimately not get vaccinated because of health reasons. Yeah, vaccinated people can still get the virus. That's true for every virus. But being vaccinated means your body is ready to deal with it and makes it far less likely for you to suffer any actual downsides. Remember, there are people in hospitals to this day still suffering from the after effects of a difficult COVID infection, even though the virus itself is long gone from their bodies. Too long, didn't read. If you don't know jack about the virus, kindly shut the F up. It was a joke, not a dick. Don't take it so hard. I haven't gotten COVID and it's been nearly two years. I literally just don't care. And there we find the truth of the matter. It's always about me with you people. Me, 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 me. I haven't gotten COVID, so I don't care. I'm not forced to work these jobs to feed my family, so I don't care. My life isn't being bombed to ruin, so I don't care. I won't live to see the truly devastating results of climate change, so I don't care. It's self-centered, egotistical jackholes like you that are the ruin of this world. On this next post, OP got locked out of his hotel room, so he went to the front desk lady and this was on the counter. Since starting here, I've stepped up and had your back through many things. I've stepped into positions simply to ensure that our guests have a great stay. I've gone above and beyond to accommodate not only our guests, but for you, employees, and the ever-changing schedule. Not only that, I've done it with a smile on my face. We've spoken numerous times regarding a management position. When I expressed my interest in a management position, you told me they weren't available at the moment, but I was a great candidate for one if it did become available. You also told me that you wanted me to be in the director of sales position when Jessica left. Because I truly enjoyed my job, I never pushed the issue. I always figured that you would tell me more when the time came. On August 13th, you emailed me an attachment that listed a new manager. When I asked you about it, you were cold and short. I asked you about it the next day and you told me, This discussion is over, Millie. You're being ridiculous. Being hurt isn't being ridiculous, Brian. I've worked my tail off working doubles, coming in on my days off to do social, cleaning rooms, folding laundry, preparing breakfast, all while watching the front desk as well. Just for you to offer no explanation as to why a new manager was being hired and I wasn't even considered? Then when I tried to have a conversation with you, you shut me down? I've thought long and hard about why that could possibly be. Perhaps because I don't wear my uniform? I was always taught to dress for the position that I want, not the one that I have. Other than that, I'm stumped. I've gone the extra mile for this hotel and its guests. I have personally received many amazing and 5-star reviews on Google. I've done cross-training and I've learned many different positions to keep this hotel afloat. I've put everything into this and this is what I get in return? One of our guests once told me, They would never give you a promotion here because you do everything a manager should do in your current position. Why buy the cow when you can have the milk for free? After having to cancel a flight in order to work due to being short-staffed, a friend of mine told me, They're just gonna run you dry until they don't need you anymore. Even in a time of need, you've still managed to make me feel unvalued in such a short amount of time. I've given this a great effort and I got a huge slap in the face. I no longer want or need this in my life. Truthfully, I've stayed because of the genuine bond that I formed with our guests and because I respected you, Brian. I didn't want to see you or this hotel fail. However, I stepped up and you let me down. You've been quite rude with the discussions that I've tried having lately. I would be treated better at McDonald's. In conclusion, I quit. Down in the comments, we have this story from Beefwitch. This is the same sort of spineless BS you see from management in the corporate world too. At my last job, my manager quit without notice. He just couldn't take it anymore. Since I had the most experience in the department, I got brought in and offered the position. I took it because the bump in pay was attractive and I knew that I could handle it. I did the job well for six months, during which time I spent two months in Mexico City getting our off-site data center set up. At my yearly review, I was given an exemplary score and told that I saved the day. Three weeks later, my director brought me in and told me that they'd hired a new department manager who had much more experience. I was told several times that I'd done an amazing job and that it had nothing to do with performance. I was flabbergasted and told my director that it felt like an act of betrayal. 
I had busted my butt over six months, spending two months away from my wife and two-year-old daughter, just to be stabbed in the back and told that it wasn't personal. He tried to argue that he informed me the position was for an interim department manager. I took out the official offer letter that I would received from HR and showed it to him. The word interim wasn't anywhere on it. He just said, well, that was a mistake on our part. I apologize. He then offered me a team lead position, and I told him I need a few days to think about it. This new position would reduce my salary back to what I was making before accepting the promotion. Oh, and he also asked me to train the new manager. I called up one of my old bosses, and he offered me a position the following week, so I quit without notice. I feel these two stories in my bones. I've told this story a lot of times on this channel, so I'm sorry if it's repeat information, but in my previous job, I had a manager who told me year after year after year that I was going to get a promotion, and it just never came. I literally never once got a pay raise over years of working there. And for me, it wasn't even really about, like, the money. I didn't really need like a 5% bump or whatever. What I wanted was some sort of indication, some sort of sign that there was a future at that company, that if I kept working, if I applied myself, and if they like told me what I was doing wrong and I corrected it, then I could eventually get, you know, move up, get more money, climb the ladder. But no, he just blew smoke up my butt and told me, yeah, you're doing a great job. Promotion's right around the corner. And like, I remember one time I had just had this conversation with him and then like, I don't remember the details exactly, but something happened where I kind of got screwed over and he knew it. And so he called me into his office and he's like, you know, I'm really sorry that you got screwed over on this thing. I want you to know that I recognize the hard work that you're doing. And he gave me an envelope that had a like a hundred dollar gift card to some restaurant or something. And I was like, cool, thanks. Like, is that it? I was thinking that I didn't say it to him, but I was like, is that it? You're giving me a hundred dollar gift card. That's what I get after you know, two or three years of doing the job and you kind of lying to me. And then, then he fired me. Which, yeah, I can't really blame him for necessarily because I think I kind of experienced what the woman from the first letter experienced where like she applied herself and she became increasingly disenfranchised with the job. And so she just got frustrated and that frustration was coming out in her job. That's what happened with me. I became just really pissed off at work that it wasn't going anywhere and I guess it's just a dead-end job so I applied myself less and less. I spent more time on YouTube watching YouTube videos, a little bit of a, a foreshadowing as to what would come and he saw me on YouTube one too many times and he fired me but jokes on you boss because now I'm a YouTuber and I work for myself and I love my job and I'm making way more money than I was making before so I guess everything worked out in the end. Anyways, it just reminds me of that old saying, people don't quit bad jobs, they quit bad managers, or in my case, get fired by bad managers. On this next post, there was a Reddit post about people protesting masks, and this is down in the comments. The people commenting here seem to primarily be in the anti-vax, anti-mask crowd. So I want to present a different perspective to those people in the hopes that maybe they'll see the light. You guys are, and I really can't emphasize this enough, the dumbest mother effers on planet Earth. Like, I'm all for asking questions, but if you don't like the answers, then you shouldn't just discredit them and find some YouTube video made by a guy named Steve Larry filmed in the back of his shed just because he says the things you want to hear. Use your effing brains, people. We should have all been in this together. Instead, a giant chunk of society decided that they couldn't be bothered to inconvenience themselves. So they collectively messed their diapers and sucked on the teat of what is probably the biggest misinformation campaign in history. You'll be remembered as villains, not heroes. Morons, not intellectuals. Gullible, not free thinkers. You might think that posts like these are stupid, but they wouldn't be necessary if you disgusting losers weren't jerking your diseased selves off all over the communities you live in. You are the ones who have been acting inappropriately. Wear your effing mask. Get effing vaccinated. Grow an effing brain. So I read this post online earlier about how this woman had a stroke and her family rushed her to the hospital, but there literally weren't any bids available because all the bids were occupied by people who had COVID. So this woman, who could have been saved from her stroke, ended up dying because no one could attend to her. I feel like maybe one of the easy solutions here is if you're going to have people who refuse to wear a mask, who refuse to be vaccinated, who refuse to listen to medical professionals, then by doing so, you lose the right to be treated by those same professionals. 
If you want to get all your medical advice from Karen and Billy Bob on YouTube, then cool. When you get sick, they can treat you. That was our slash murdered by words. And if you like this content, check out my Patreon where I publish extra episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.